This channel is proudly sponsored by the Demon Ninja Kickstarter, a tabletop RPG of horror and redemption in a dark Japan. Please check out the links in the description and in the pinned comment. Here's a promo to the Kickstarter. and the Red Room Publishing. Please check out the link to their store also in the description and in the comment for exclusive tabletop RPG products you will find nowhere else. Hi, welcome to this part of my review featuring the Heavy Gear Revitalized Core Rulebook, the first edition. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this tabletop RPG of mech battles and sci-fi drama, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about the combat round and actions. This tactical game is subdivided into combat rounds that simulate approximately 30 seconds of real life events. During each combat round, the following 8 steps occur in order. Step 0 is the setup phase. This phase occurs only in the first combat round of any combat. Perform a leadership test based upon the skill of each side's overall commander. The winner chooses which player will place units first on the map. Reroll dice. Players should alternate, each placing one combat group at a time on the map board. After placing a unit on the map board, the player must declare what speed, stationary, combat or top speed it is moving at. Each pre-designed scenario should have clearly defined setup locations for each faction. When not using pre-designed scenarios, the players should agree on which map boards to use and set up on the first row of hexes on either side. Then we have step 1, declaration phase. Both sides declare any extra actions and evasive maneuvers for the round. In step 2, initiative phase, initiative decides which side has the advantage during a round of combat. Both sides roll an action test based on their overall commander's leadership skill. The highest result wins the initiative. Draws are re-rolled. Then we have step 3. Winner movement phase. The side which won the initiative may move any or all units in one of their combat groups, squadron or cadre or platoon. Alternatively, a unit may withhold its movement until step 5. The winner declares which units shift speeds. Combat to top and vice versa. Then we have step 4. Loser movement phase. The side which lost the initiative may move any or all units in one of their combat groups. The loser declares which units shift speeds, as explained before. Step 5. Winner delayed movement phase. Any units which withheld their movement in step 3 may now move. Any unit that withheld its movement in step 3 and does not move in step 5 loses its opportunity to move for the combat round. Then we have step 6, winner action phase. The members of the combat group that moved in step 3 and or 5 may perform actions. Actions include attacks, sensor scans and many other events. In step 7, loser action phase, the members of the combat group that moved in step 4 may perform actions. Repeat steps 2 to 7 until each combat group has had the opportunity to move and act. A combat group may only move and act once per combat round. If one player no longer has any combat groups left to use, he skips his phases until the end of the combat round. During step 8, miscellaneous events phase, any unusual event, such as long-range artillery and high-altitude bombing attacks, is resolved. Let's talk about the number of actions. A vehicle's actions are limited by the total number of crewmen. All vehicles automatically get one action. Vehicles with two or more crewmen get additional actions at no cost. Some or all of these additional actions can be lost when crew casualties occur. You have a table listing the lowest crew sizes required to obtain additional actions. The minimum crew requirement to gain more actions is doubled for each additional action. 
It's important to note that a vehicle's crew can get more actions by penalizing all their action test rolls by one for each additional action taken. For example, a single crewman could fire twice with a minus one on both attacks or three times with a minus two on all attacks. These additional actions must be declared at the beginning of a round in step one. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part, we are going to talk about movement and terrain and other things. As you can see, this tabletop RPG is highly tactical. You need to consider not only the outcomes of the different phases of the combat round, but also the number of actions that are being carried out. Thank you for watching this part of the review. Don't forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. This has been Abraham El Jaguar, a professional game master. If you want me to run a game for you, please check out the pinned comment below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you and see you later.